everyone. I hope everybody's doing okay. I want to talk about multicollinearity today, which is essentially collinearity exhibiting itself with multiple variables. And what exactly is collinearity? And how does it affect our regression? Now, this is exactly something we're going to see in this video. But fundamentally, collinearity is when two or more independent variables tend to relay same information and then they are used in regression inputs they're communicating the same information in the data set and that often results in generating misleading results now we're going to see exactly how that happens today I've got a data set that shows age, sleep duration, quality of sleep, physical activity levels, stress level, heart rate and daily steps these happen to be the independent variables that are predicting whether or not a person has sleep disorder. This is qualitative in nature, but I've used a very naive translation to represent this qualitative data in numbers. So I've got, I've got none represented by 10, sleep apnea represented by 20, and insomnia represented by 30. There's a very simple way to do this using the if formula and the formula is up here in the formula bar. Now this is not the point of discussion today. What we're trying to see is when we go ahead with the regression using sleep disorder as the dependent variable and all the other variables as independent variables, what do we really get? Now before we get to regression, let's see how they are correlated. Now, this is what the correlation matrix looks like. What we can see here is a strong correlation between quality of sleep and sleep duration 0.88 we also see a very strong correlation between daily steps and physical activity level and then heart rate and stress level are also correlated okay they're strongly correlated now we do see these correlations and these do make sense for example with the high heart rate you are expected to have a high stress level with the uh, greater number of daily steps that you take in a day translates to a greater amount of physical activity level. So these correlations do make sense. Similarly, quality of sleep and sleep duration, they may or may not be correlated, but in this data set, it does show a very strong correlation. Now, what happens when you put these strongly correlated variables in a regression? How does multicollinearity now manifest itself in our regression output? So this is our regression output for this. Now we have our independent variables all set up here, but notice their p-values. For a 5% significance, we see their p-values representing these coefficients, rendering, rendering them as insignificant. That is a problem for us because these independent variables are important. And just because they are correlated with another independent variable, all of their p-values, almost all of their p-values are insignificant. Now, this might be quite misleading because when we want to finalize our regression model, we might end up eliminating all of these independent variables. Why? Because their p-values suggest that these coefficients are insignificant for a 5% significance level. And this is the problem that multicollinearity manifests itself with. So what do we do? We have an option now to address this problem by choosing which of these coefficients or which of these variables should we retain. For example, consider quality of sleep and sleep duration. Consider heart rate and stress level, consider daily steps and physical activity level. Now, they are in pairs and they are communicating the same information, but we don't need two variables to communicate the same information. Because one variable is behaving in one way, the other follows it, we might as well just keep only one of them. So let us go ahead and do exactly that. Let us keep only one of the variables these two let's only keep one of these two and let's only keep one of these two let's see how we can do that now 
we could go ahead and remove daily steps from our data set. We could drop daily steps because that same information is being relayed by physical activity. So we could keep physical activity level as this independent variable in our data set, and we could drop the daily steps. So once we remove daily steps, what we really get is this regression. Now notice the p-value of physical activity level is now 10 to the power minus 7. This has become significant. Previously, physical activity level was insignificant. After dropping a correlated variable, daily steps, we have found that physical activity level is now significant in this regression, right? So this is how we could deal with multicollinearity by choosing to keep an independent variable, which is correlated with other independent variables, and by dropping the other independent variables. Now, this is how we have addressed one problem, but we see there are other strong correlations too. So what can we do then? This is just an updated version of our data set after dropping daily steps. Now, what we can drop next is sleep duration. Consider, and this is the updated version after dropping sleep duration. Once we drop sleep duration, what we have to ensure is that we keep quality of sleep in our data set because it is relaying the same information. So, have a look at the regression output now. The quality of sleep independent variable is now significant. Previously, quality of sleep was also significant, but its level of significance has improved. Previously, this was 10 to the power minus 7, but after dropping the sleep duration, it is 10 to the power minus 31. So it's even more significant now to our regression output, reason being that what otherwise was being contributed by sleep duration is now being totally handled by this independent variable quality of sleep. So this improves the significance level of our independent variable. The last aspect here is heart rate and stress level. So again, we get to keep only one of these two and drop the other. So we drop stress level and we keep heart rate and conduct our regression analysis on the updated data set now. And what do we see here is that heart rate is also significant. It's less than 5% uh, significance level, which previously heart rate was not, right? So this was insignificant previously, and we see heart rate to be significant now, right? Notice we have dropped stress level from this data set. So, these are then our four final independent variables in our regression model with significant coefficients and their significance is um, showing up here through their p-values. In short, in summary, what we have really done is we have looked at our correlation matrix and we have figured out which of these were strongly correlated and we have dropped one of them. Between quality of sleep and sleep duration, we've dropped sleep duration between heart rate and stress level, we dropped stress level. Between daily steps and physical activity level, we dropped daily steps. And as a result, we've got significant independent variables in our regression output. This is how we have addressed multicollinearity and we have ensured that our regression output is in fact making sense. Consider this from our original results where we would have been tempted to drop so many of these independent variables just because their p-values were greater than 5% and then they were insignificant. But after addressing these problems with multicollinearity, we have figured out that in fact four of them are significant by removing the variables that were giving us the same information in the data set.